Hi, I'm Stuart Lynch. This is the last of six parts in a series covering version control using Xcode and Git. In this episode, we're going to take a look at using GitHub Desktop, a GUI client for managing your local and remote Git repositories. There are many such clients, Bitbucket, Tower, and one that's getting a lot of press lately, Fork, that you can explore, and in many cases are much more powerful. But for our purposes as an introduction to Git and Xcode, this application serves our purposes just fine. We'll install the application, clone an open source repository, and keep up to date with it. We'll clone another open source project and claim it as our own. And finally, we'll recover from a disaster where we lost our project and do a complete restore from GitHub. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. To download Git Desktop, go to desktop.github.com and download the client for Mac OS. I've already done that, and the download page gives you an overview of what the client can do, and I'll go through several of these features. Once you've downloaded and installed the application, open it and go to the Preferences menu and enter your credentials to sign in. You'll see your remote repository already added to the list on the right. We want to add our local repository to the application as well. This is as easy as drag and drop, as the note on the bottom of the screen indicates. So locate your project in the finder and drag and drop it onto the space provided. This now switches you to the project where you can view your entire history. Note that I must have left this project in the development branch because that's the one that's being displayed as being active. I can step through each commit and see what was added in green and what was removed in red. Since this last commit, there have been no changes, so no changes appear in the change screen. I do have the ability to find the local project in the finder or open GitHub directly to view the remote repository simply by clicking on these buttons. I can also switch branches from the current branch using this selection list. GitHub is full of open source projects that you can clone. Just make sure you read the license file if there is one to know what your limitations are on using the content might be. I'm going to go to my real account, Stuart Lynch, and see if there's anything interesting there that I might want. I see that I have 26 public repositories that I'm offering to share with others. Brian Voon of Let's Build That App YouTube channel has taught me a lot and I often challenge myself to work on or change some of the things that he does. This is one of those examples. It doesn't really matter what it is for the purposes of this video, but I want to show you how I can download the repository and add it to my own collection of local repositories. To do this, I can click on the Clone or Download button and choose Open in Desktop. I get the opportunity to choose where I want it to be stored, and off it goes and fetches it for me. Once downloaded, in my list of current repositories, I see that it's been added. It is also added it under the Stuart Lynch account name, so I know that it is not one of my own, but one rather that someone else has created. Notice that doing it this way means I can open and modify the repository as a local repository, but because I got it from Stuart Lynch, I cannot push it up to his remote because I don't own it. I would have to create my own remote to do that. Opening a desktop does not create a remote repository for me. As you can see when I return to my Create at GitHub page, the remote is not there. Back in GitHub Desktop, Clicking on View on GitHub takes me to Stuart Lynch's page, but I'm still logged in as Createch. Let me switch to the Stuart Lynch account now by signing in as Stuart. Notice I actually have 60 repositories in total. Only 26 of them are public. The rest are private. I'm going to go to that repository that the CreateEck account just cloned, and I'm going to change the README file. Now, README files are created using Markdown. If anyone in this video is interested in what I use to create my Markdown files, or even what Markdown is, 
please leave a response to this video below. If there's enough interest, I'd be happy to do a video or two on this. Anyway, all I'm going to do is change this one line, editing the heading from Changes Made to Changes I Made to Project, and then let the GitHub web client make the commit to the remote repository for me. I'd better sign out now and go back to my Createch account before I forget. Let's go back to the LBTA chart-sl project. And remember, I do not own this repository. It's on Stuart Lynch's account, and he has made changes since I cloned it. Well, that doesn't matter. It's still open source. I can fetch the updates simply by clicking on Fetch Origin. When I do that, I see that there has been one commit since I last cloned it. I know that. What I can do now is pull that from the master branch of the origin, that's Stuart Lynch's account, and it will replace my local repository. If I go to my local copy in Finder now and open the README file in my Markdown editor, I see that I have the latest update. This is a great way to fetch the latest files from great contributors like Paul Hudson, Two Straws of Hacking of Swift fame, and many others who regularly contribute tutorial files and update them regularly. Now what if I wanted to clone an open source project and use it and update it for my own purposes? For example, let's return to Stuart Lynch's GitHub repository. Remember, I'm logged in as Createch Solutions, so I can only see Stuart's public repositories. And this one, full screen modal, looks like it could be useful in my Swift UI projects. So I'm going to download it as a zip file to my downloads folder. When you download a zip file, you don't get the local repository. This is clean as if you have never set it up. I can show you this by opening the project in Xcode and going to the source navigator. See, no project or branches. Of course, we can do as we did in one of the first videos. We can use Xcode to create a repository, but I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to use GitHub Desktop to do the work for me. First, I'm going to move it out of the Downloads folder to a more permanent location in my Documents folder. With it moved, I return to GitHub Desktop. I can use this Add drop-down menu to create a new repository. I'll locate it from where I just moved it and give the repository a name and description, then click on Create Repository. It is in the other column in the sidebar, which means that there is no remote. I can fix this now by choosing to publish it. A remote repository will be created on the Createch account, and I'll keep it private. Returning to my Createch GitHub page, let me refresh my home screen, and you see I now have two repositories. Though it's not necessary, just as a reminder, I'm going to fetch from the remote to make sure my local repository is up to date. Moving back to the sidebar now, we see that the repository is now under the Createch Solutions group as a private repository. And finally, what if disaster strikes and your hard drive fails or your computer is stolen? You've lost your project. Let's simulate that by deleting our project that we have been working on for this entire series. If I return to GitHub Desktop, the link is broken and I'm told about that. I could choose to clone again and that would fix the problem, but let's take another approach. I'll delete the old GitHub Desktop project link and create a new one. Back on the Createch GitHub web page, we'll download in Desktop. Notice first that I'm on the master branch. I'll make sure that I put it back where I want it and choose clone. If I open the project in Xcode, I can go to the source control navigator and see that the only branch I got was the master branch. I know that there's a development branch too. So back in GitHub desktop, I'm going to switch to the other branch. Remember this is the remote branch and fetch it from the origin, our remote. Opening the project one last time, as we go to the Source Control Navigator, I see that I have both branches back. The project is fully restored. Well, that's it. You've come to the end of this six-part series on using Xcode and Git with a dabble in Terminal and GitHub Desktop. 
I hope you've enjoyed this series, and if you do, I'd very much appreciate a thumbs up and subscription to my channel. If you do this, it means that I'm doing something worthwhile and will continue to produce single and series videos like this. I'm most active on Twitter, so please follow me there to find out what else I'm up to.